Hi, Robert Perlman with CollectSpace.com with a question for Commander Steve Lindsay and his uh, Discovery crewmates. Outside of times when the media, like myself, ask about this being Discovery's last mission, how prevalent has the finality of this flight been during the course of your mission? Have there been specific times where the legacy and history of the vehicle has struck you? Well, that's a, uh, that's a difficult question. Um, we've been very busy during our mission, as all shuttle missions are and space station missions. And so mostly we've been probably spent spending 95 percent of our time to 99 percent on just doing the work and uh, and getting the work done. And and so when you're really busy like that, you're focusing on doing the task, doing the task correctly, making sure you uh, you get everything done how it's supposed to done and, and don't miss anything. However, there are times, uh, I know personally, when I've been reflecting about it, uh, being the last mission and, and what a wonderful vehicle it is, and probably, you know, we were coming up and docking, and, and when you look out the cupola windows, you can look right into Discovery's payload bay and see the wings and see Discovery written on the wings, and times like that, I really reflect about uh, what a great vehicle it's been, 39 missions, uh, nearly one year on orbit, and uh, think about all the things that that vehicle has done, and, and uh, it's just really inspiring to me and, uh, and kind of bittersweet um, and, and, quite frankly, sad that, that knowing that when we land, that will be it for this vehicle. Thank you. And, and to follow up on that, uh, a question for Steve Bowen and Al Drew. Um, they say a picture is worth a thousand words, and through your helmet cam, we got to see uh, when you took a glance at Discovery uh, dock to the station during your spacewalks. Um, would you, uh, one or both of you, describe what it was like uh, to see Discovery there and, uh, and reflect on its, uh, its past 365 days in space? A lot of us were captured, re repeated what Steve had from the cupola, uh, just to have Discovery right there and filling our entire visor up close and personal. Uh, you realize it's just a magnificent ship. Uh, it's huge, it's complex, uh, just a wonderful, um, completely capable vehicle. And uh, to be out there um, working on and around and near it is just a privilege. To be part of the legacy of Discovery is, is just a, um, I guess it just seems like a blessing. This is Gerhard Daumer, the German Aerospace Center and Space Expo Association. Question for Al Drew. What was the most difficult and the most exciting moment during your EVAs? Uh, that's easy. They were both the same. Uh, when I first exited the airlock on my first EVA, uh, we were over top of the jungles. It looked like it was maybe South America, the Amazon basin somewhere. Uh, just beautiful, the clouds, the river valleys down there, all the greenery. And I had to remind myself that I had work to do and I couldn't just take in the scenery. Um, so it was exciting and it was difficult to tear my eyes away from that and actually focus on getting things ready for our tasks ahead. Question for Paolo. You accomplished about half of your long duration mission. What was your most challenging task and did you have any surprises and what was your most exciting moment so far? Well, it's been a pleasure so far here. We've been spent uh, yet yeah, two months, uh, Expedition 26. And uh, I think the most challenging uh, time here is not, there is not really a time. I mean, it's the, the challenge is when I look at a procedure for the first time, it looks very complex and I try to understand and interpret it, try to do it without making mistakes, and sometimes I do. Uh, so I, I think those are the, for me, are the most uh, challenging times. But uh, as usual, with uh, familiarity, we're repeating things, uh, things get familiar, and uh, we get to do it with uh, no problems. And of course, we always have the ground control, mission control helping us and keeping us out of troubles. This is Jill Tolk representing the Cohasset Mariner in Massachusetts. A question for the East Coast, Steve. What has been the most challenging part and the most rewarding part of your unexpected shuttle flight? I think the most challenging part was uh, trying to get up to speed to understand the EVAs and then uh, even more so trying to get up to speed with everything else that goes on on a shuttle flight and where my tasks would be and what they were and how familiar I was with them and how much more training I had to have. So that was uh, clearly the most difficult part of it. Uh, the, the best part really was, you know, getting to, to work with the crew. It's uh, four of my classmates from uh, 2000 and 
uh, Commander Steve Lindsay, and that's been great, uh, great crew. Just having the ability to spend time with them, it's uh, been fantastic. And then getting up here with the ISS crew, it's been really the best part of it. Thanks for the good word, Steve-O. Now a question for the West Coast, Steve, and for Eric Bow. What good Bowen anecdote from this week could you share with newspaper readers in his hometown? I, I, I think the favorite, uh, our favorite uh, Steve Bowen story for, uh, for this mission so far was, uh, and I'm sure there are more to come, um, was uh, when, uh, when Steve was taking a pump module off of, uh, off of a, a, a transporter on the, on the truss segment, uh, EVA and, and Mike Barrett and uh, Scott Kelly were driving him on the robotic arm. Um, about the time they released that pump module, um, which is about a, uh, it's a several hundred pounds, for Steve to uh, to take in his arms so they could fly him over to where it belonged, um, the the entire uh, space station robotic arm crashed, and uh, which means he was stuck there holding this uh, payload for not for for what seemed like a really long time for him, but actually uh, the, the crew did a great job reconfiguring to a to an alternate to robotic workstation to get it back alive pretty quickly. But Steve was stuck there for probably, I don't know, 30, 35 minutes uh, holding this pump module loose. And so it gave us an opportunity to, uh, to joke with him and kind of make fun of him while he was out there stuck with nowhere to go. Hi, uh, Denise Chow at space.com with a question for either Steve Lindsay or Eric Bowe. Um, when Discovery does its fly around after undocking, I was wondering if either or both of you could um, speak to the significance of performing that maneuver with Discovery for the final time and in doing so, seeing the space station completed with a vehicle that's been so instrumental in its construction. Thank you. Well, we've been talking about the the uh, long history of the space shuttle, and it's a, a privilege to get the opportunity to undock and do the fly around the space station. You know, the, the International Space Station has every partner represented with the different modules on board right now. We have uh, ATV, which is from the European Space Agency, and the HTV from the Japanese JAXA. And also, after we finish the fly around, it, what's amazing is how big the structure is. Right now, when we're docked, we're more than a million pounds. And so to actually fly around the vehicle, take pictures, and marvel at that every the majority of the U.S. segment was brought up piece by piece by the space shuttle will be truly amazing. Hi, uh, Eric Berger with the Houston Chronicle. Congratulations on a successful mission. A question maybe, maybe for Nicole or someone else who wants to tackle it, but I don't think people on the ground can sort of fully appreciate what the living space is like in the space station. So now that it's complete, maybe you could talk a little bit in terms that people can understand how large it is and how much space you have to move around in. And um, just, just to start off, and uh, Mike Barrett points this out, is that uh, this space station here now is the largest pressurized volume in space in history. It's, it's huge. I mean, I, I use a word my son uses all the time, which is ginormous. Um, we have 12 people up here now, and honestly, if we spread ourselves out, you could spread across this vehicle and you know, not see another person. It's, it's that big. I think volume-wise, equivalent to the interior of a 747 or a little bit bigger. And um, it's just really, really impressive to know that as a volume and a total um, volume workspace, we can use every single one of the walls and every single one of these modules in a way that um, we just can't do on the ground. And so it makes for a really wonderful resource for science and living and, um, and just being up here floating around. It's great. It's Chris Baltimore, the Houston Bureau Chief for Reuters News Agency, and I have a question about garbage, literally. Um, how much uh, trash does the ISS generate? Uh, where do you put it, and uh, do you recycle? We we do recycle certain things. We recycle our, our water and uh, turn it into, or our urine and turn it into water. And uh, that's very helpful because, uh, you know, disposing of that is, and disposing of any trash is quite a challenge. Um, right now, believe it or not, we don't have a whole lot of what's called common trash on board, which is basically the garbage we generate from our food and our clothing. And, uh, and that's because we've recently had two progress vehicles uh, depart. And, uh, you know, the, our cosmonaut colleagues were very efficient in getting them loaded with, uh, 
we had probably about 11 or 12 very large garbage bags, like a, you know, a out, outdoor kind of garbage bag filled with trash, and we were able to uh, get rid of those. And um, generally, though, the, the trash stays in a certain area of the node, as well as there's a certain area in the uh, Russian segment where some trash stays, and it stays there until we can dispose of it, and we can dispose of it probably on average every uh, you know two to three months uh, when we have a vehicle that uh, that departs and uh, generally burns up in the in the atmosphere uh, hello this is Marcia Dunn of the Associated Press with a question for Katie Coleman there's great interest in R2 all the way up to the President of the United States and I'm wondering will the robots unveiling be moved up considering all the interest and how excited are you to work with the robot Well, I think uh, we've all been voting to move up the move, move up getting him out of his box. In fact, we're all pretty sure that we hear scratching from the inside there. Um, there's a very elaborate choreography of all the things that have to come out of the PMM and get stowed different places. And uh, folks on the ground are working real hard at that. And we'll see if we end up being able to bring Robonaut, Robonaut out before Discover leaves. I'm, I'm really not sure. I am looking forward to working with him. You know, as we bring robots up into space, one of the reasons to do that is just to understand, A, how to work with them, and B, just the mechanics of how they work and how that's affected by zero G. We want to learn those lessons here on the inside of the space station before we send them out to the outside of the space station or to other planets, which we need to be able to do in, in terms of exploring both as you know, a human presence and a robotics presence. It'll take both of those to, to get us further out into the universe, and Robonaut is a good first step. Thank you. And for Steve Bowen, it's, it's been a real whirlwind for you the past month. I'm wondering, um, are you pinching yourself that you're even in space on this mission and have had a chance to go spacewalking? And how are you going to make it up to Tim Cropro when you get back on Earth? <laughs> I am pinching myself, and there's no possible way I can make it up to Tim. But, you know, Tim did an incredible job putting this together. It's the only reason we were so successful outside. Uh, he really did a fantastic job. Uh, so if there's anything I can do for him, I'm willing to to discuss it. Hi, this is Emily Baldwin from Astronomy Now magazine in the UK. Um, it's always really amazing seeing views of the Earth from space, and I'd certainly be interested to hear your comments on any Earth observation you've done this mission. But what I'd really like to know is, do you do any nighttime astronomical observations? Uh, and if so, what? Well, hello to the UK, and uh, let me uh, get the first part of that. The Earth views are just stunning. Uh, it's very, very difficult to explain them to people. Even pictures don't do it justice. And uh, your senses can be really overwhelmed by how beautiful the Earth is. I want to mention to uh, the UK that we actually have a medallion up here struck in honor of uh, James Cook. This was uh, commissioned about five years after his death. And uh, we're very, very happy to have that and to honor the rich uh, maritime legacy of uh, world discovery that the UK has. As far as uh, astronomical observations, one of the problems is that uh, we're moving around the Earth at 17,500 miles an hour. It'd be uh, kind of difficult to train onto something unless we were really uh, more mechanically equipped to do that. We keep our space station at, uh, oriented so that we're looking uh, belly to the ground most of the time, and that's comfortable uh, to us for a lot of reasons, and uh, we get really good ground views that way. Now, having said that, uh, we have some very good cameras on board, and we're able to take some uh, astrophotographs uh, that don't require much, uh, much in the way of exposures. But most of these are Milky Way shots and uh, Aurora shots, and they're quite spectacular, but uh, nothing compared to what the Hubble can do. Thank you. Um, and my second question, um, Apollo inspired the children of the 60s and the 70s, um, the shuttle, the, the 80s and 90s and the early 21st century. With the shuttle program retiring, how do you think uh, we'll be able to inspire uh, future astronauts? Well, you know, I think the space program in general is, is inspiring. And I think, you know, our country and certain countries around the world have a strong history of uh, exploration and uh, now exploration in space. And I think even when the shuttle retires, we're going to continue that. We're still going to have a, uh, a space station. It's still going to be uh, uh, supported by astronauts and cosmonauts from around the world. And I think, uh, you know, we're going to have a program beyond this. We're not sure exactly what it is right now, but 
you know, someday humans are going to venture again beyond low or Earth orbit back to the moon and uh, Mars and other destinations in our solar system. And it's, uh, you know, something I think can inspire kids and it's something that we all can be uh, proud of. From Isa, thank you to Commander Kelly and Lindsay having us participate in this event. First question for Commander Kelly, how it is on station while having vehicles and components from all program partners? Well, I think it's one of the, uh, the great things about this program. It's, it's an international program. It shows how countries that uh, cooperate can do great things. And building a space station such as the International Space Station is probably one of the most you know, significant engineering achievements that uh, people have achieved. And, and we've done that um, with this international partnership that I think is really one of the, uh, the highlights of this program. Enrica Battifoglia, Agenzia ANSA. And from the news agency, Enrica Battifoglia. And Paolo, today you're inaugurating the uh, Leonardo module, an Italian room on the International Space Station. So what are the first operations that are going to happen on its interior? Good afternoon, Enrica. We're working very hard inside the uh, Leonardo module uh, because it came in a flight configuration, so everything is fastened uh, in a way to secure it for launch. So we're removing all the uh, packing materials and uh, so that we can stow it in the Japanese module that's going to be leaving soon. So we're using all the astronauts, including the uh, Discovery crew that are staying here another couple of days to help us with that.